Welcome to our electron line. Now what we're going to do is find the probability of finding the particle in a particular location. And to do that, we're going to define the region where we're going to find the, look for the probability. It's going to be between the point x equals L over 4, one quarter the distance from one end to the other end of the well, and a very small distance farther, a small delta x farther, where delta x in this case is going to be 0.01L. Of course, we can arbitrarily make the delta x smaller and smaller and smaller. Again, what we're doing here is finding it for n equals 1 at the first energy level, which means that this here is our probability density function or probability function of finding the particle at any point between 0 and L. Again, we have our equation here, which is simply the product of our wave function, because the wave function does not have an imaginary part, so it's simply the product. Otherwise, we'd have to multiply the wave function by its complex conjugate. And notice we're finding the probability of the particle being between L over 4 and L over 4 plus 1 100 of L. And so our limits are now going to change to that. When we calculate that, we get the following. We can pull the 2 over L out. So this is equal to 2 divided by L times, since we have the sine square of an angle, we can find a, a trigonometric identity for that, which is 1 half times 1 minus the cosine of twice the angle, the cosine of 2 times n pi x over L, all of it times the x. And we're going to integrate that from L over 4, which is 0.25L, to L over 4 plus 1 100 of an L, which is 0.26L. Might be easier just to write it like that. So we're trying to find the probability in a very small region right there. Notice in the next video, we're going to show you a shortcut method to find that same result or approximate that same result. So first of all here, we can separate this two into two separate integrals. So this would be equal to, multiply this times that, we get 1 over L times the first integral, which is simply going to be dx from 0.25L to 0.26L, and then minus, now here when we integrate that, we need the proper differential, so we're going to need uh, to multiply times L over 2n pi times the integral from 0.25L to 0.26L of the cosine of 2n pi over L x dx. Well, instead of dx, we're going to need the proper differential, which is going to be 2n pi over L times dx. There we go. So this now becomes the proper differential of this integral. That's why we needed this constant here. And we need to close the brackets. All right. So now we're ready to go ahead and do that integral. So this is equal to 1 over L times x evaluated from 0.25L to 0.26L minus L divided by 2n pi. Now n, of course, in this case, is going to be equal to 1. So we can just replace n by 1. So this becomes L over 2 pi. The integral of the cosine is the positive sine. So that would be the sine of 2 times n, which is 2, 2 pi divided by L times x, evaluated from 0.25L to 0.26L. Let's see, do I have a closing bracket here and a closing bracket there? So here, notice when we plug in the limits, the upper limit, we get this, lower limit, we get that. When we subtract, we sim simply get 1 100 L. So this is equal to 1 over L times 0.01 L. That would be when we plug in the limits, the upper and lower limit here. And then we get minus L over 2 pi times. We plug in the upper limit, we get the sine of 2 pi times 0.26L divided by L minus, when we plug in the lower limit, we get the sine of 2 pi times 0.25L over L. And notice when we simplify that a little bit, we have the L and the L cancel, the L and the L cancel, so here we have 
2 pi times 0.26 and 2 pi times 0.25. So basically, 1 100 of a 2 pi or 1 50 of a pi. And that would be the difference between the two angles. I still need a closing bracket. So I think for that we're going to need a calculator to work out what that is equal to. So this is equal to 1 over L times 0.01L minus. Oop. And I should probably put that constant in there, L over 2 pi. So minus L over 2 pi times. So now we have the sine of 2 pi times 0.26. So, and that needs to be in radians. I need to make sure my calculator is in radians. So let's put it in radian mode. There we go. So we have um, 2 times 0.26. That's 0.52 times pi. And take the sine of that. So let me write that down. So that is 0 0.998 minus. Now when I plug in, um, when I subtract the sine of 2 pi times a 0.25, that would be a half a pi. The sine of a half a pi is equal to exactly 1. There we go. Now let's simplify this a little bit. So we have a 1 over L. We have an L in the numerator here and an L in the numerator there. So this L cancels out this L and this L. So that becomes 1 over 2 pi multiplied times this, subtracted from 0 0.001. So this becomes 0 0.01. And notice that this is going to be a negative times a negative. That makes it a plus. Plus. So we have 0 0.01 added to this fraction right here. So let's take 1 minus 0.998 divide by 2 and divide by pi, which is equal to 0 0.000318. So when we add that together, we get 0 0.0103. I'll just go ahead and keep, well, maybe I'll just make it a 0 too. So here is the probability of finding the particle in the region from L from x equals l over 4 to x equals l over 4 plus a small delta x, which is 0.01L. So that's the probability of finding the particle right in that small little region there. Now what happens if we make delta, what happens when we make delta L smaller and smaller and smaller, or delta x smaller and smaller and smaller, in the limit, as delta x goes to 0, notice that this quantity right here, the second portion of this interval, becomes smaller, 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 and eventually this becomes 0 as delta x approaches 0. In other words, what is the probability of finding the particle right at that location, L over 4? That would be exactly 0 0.01. So that's how we try to figure that out. So what we can do here is we can actually find a way to find the probability of finding the particle anywhere along this particular path in that small little region. So about 1% chance to find a particle there, and of course we can find that for any particular point along the path of that particle. And that's how that's done.